Well, we're approaching the final sprint of the day with the lead now hovering two minutes and five seconds. This final sprint is at Mountain Ash. They'll have covered 97 miles when they get there. And it's Bauer on the front pulling the other two along. And once again, Rabobank have uh, reasserted their authority at the sharp end here of the bunch. Oh, with the gap still at two minutes and five seconds, they're happy. Rabobank are happy because uh, the man in black just coming to the back of the moment, Christian House for Rafa Condor Sharp, is four minutes and 12 seconds off that overall lead. And that means they don't really have to chase this down. It looks as if these three riders could possibly be fighting it out for the stage. Well, here comes Gilly Burton. Once again, the crowds have uh, come to the roadside to support this Tour of Britain. So Gilly Bert gets the five points again, so he's had a full house. And I would say that's his job done today because he really has taken a stranglehold on this competition. Well, you've got to remember, Hugh, he was up the road in stage one, a very difficult stage. He's now up the road again, very long stage for him, and uh, you're quite right, job done and well deserved of that. So the question you've got to ask yourself now is, can they stay away to the finish? Looking at the Rabobank team, the IG Markets Gold jersey at the back of the train of Rabobank here, you can just see it, and that's Lars Boom. And all over him is Mark Cavendish wearing that blue prostate cancer charity jersey as the points leader. He's never moved far away from him, and remember, they're only split by three seconds in the overall standings. And they three seconds can come down to the finishing line, and that's where Rabobank will be happy. Three riders away, the 10, 6, and the 4 at the finish, they'll be happy to gift that away to these three riders in front. It means that there'll not, not be any threat to the overall leader. Rabobank still lined out on the front of the main peloton as Bauer crouches down at the head of the breakaway. Well, whoever Whoever does win the stage and the bonuses will have to work hard because they've got the ascent of Kafili Mountain and that comes just five kilometres from the finish. Well, Rabobank have uh, led the field over the line and at the one point going to Vermeltfort and that's the first point he's won in the competition. Well, one more obstacle to come, Kafili Mountain. Welcome back, and our three leaders, Jack Bauer, Christian House, and Pieter Gilibert, are still ahead with 10 kilometres to go, but their lead has come down dramatically. Well, it was about 25 kilometres to go. The Team Sky went on the front and really drilled it. They're thinking of Gerrit Thomas, thinking of the stage one, and taking their bonus seconds to put him in the gold jersey. Well, riders taking their chances here. They want to try and get a run at the final climb of Philly Mountain ahead of the peloton, then they can tap out their own pace. And it was the French team of Eurocar that was trying to get in the mix to attacking off the front. It's the first time we've seen them in the Tour of Britain stage. Well, there is the island ahead of them. Let's see which side they're going to take. The other day, riders went to the left and lost a lot of time. And you can see they've done exactly the same again. The bulk of the peloton have taken the right side, and the others, well, they've got to squeeze their way back into the back of the bunch. Well, it looks as if they're all back together. Team Sky pushing hard at the front. The rider on the right from Eurocar has been brought back. Team Sky now keeping the pressure on as they have done for the last 10, 15 kilometres. So Team Sky still fanning the flames at the front to limit the advantage of the leaders. And this, of course, is all to set it up for Garen Thomas, who knows this climb like the back of his hands. It's brutal, and this could be the uh, springboard for the stage victory. Well, you've got to think that Garen Thomas knows this finish, knows this climb, and he's confident enough to try and take these bonus seconds in the finish, and that will put him at the top of the leaderboard. Well, if he could win the stage and get that 10 seconds on the line, he would go straight in to the gold jersey as the overall leader. He is third in the overall standings at six seconds at the moment. And you see at the front of three riders, about to be caught by the peloton, it's Christian House that decides the attack. Yeah, he realises that uh, their escape is almost over, but he's not going to wait for Bauer. And Gilibert, he's trying on his own. This is typical Christian House. He never, ever surrenders. Well, it looks as if they're going to come back together. The three riders of uh, Christian House, Jack Bauer and uh, Gilibert are all coming back together before we hit the bottom of this next climb. So it's not going to be too long now before the junction is made and the whole field are back together. Well, now, look at this. Bauer is trying to uh, inject more pace into the front of the group. Well, they've been out front all day today, riding in the wind, and they've still got enough energy to attack each other. But I'm pretty sure they'll shake hands as they see the big bunch behind them. They won't give in, though, will they, Brian? So it's Bauer now at the front. And once they have caught them, and it's inevitable that they are going to catch them, we will look out for the riders seizing the opportunity to spring away from the big peloton. Well, in this climb of Carfelli Mountain, who do you think is going to win? 
It suits a very strong, punchy rider. And I'm thinking in this large bunch that uh, Lars Boom wouldn't be far away at the finish. Well, Boom, he's a man to look out for, but there's one or two others that can uh, acquit themselves well on the climb. Well, they're finally caught. The junction has been made. Now, who's going to be first to attack immediately? It's Team Sky coming through. Well, it's Ben Swift at the front leading out. We know he's a sprinter, but he's not totally on form at the moment. But he's doing his teammate at the moment, thinking of Steve Cummings and getting Thomas the Welshman. Just got a glorious shot there of Caffili Castle, the largest in Wales, as the fields start to make their way to the foot slopes of this brutal ascent. It's a first category climb, and I've got a feeling the field are going to fragment on it. Well, it's already started, you. We are on the low slope at the moment. Kicks up in steps, but it's very, very steep. But the crowd at the top is absolutely amazing. This is the hors d'oeuvres before they do get onto the climb itself. Doesn't look too much, but it lips up. And just as you said, Brian, it's a series of steps. And they've just come through the town of Caffili and they've actually traversed the one way system in reverse. They've closed the whole place down. Well, as Michael Rogers moves over to the right hand side, it's actually Steve Cummings that takes it up. Getting Thomas in second place, the gold jersey of Lars Boom. Linus Gerdeman sitting in fourth place and the Dura Riders Ika Kamano. So Cummings it is right at the front here turning the screw. But the gold jersey of Last Boom is present all the time. He's marking everybody and he is very strong. But well, the gaps are starting to appear at the moment. Three riders now pushing hard at the front. Steve Cummings on the left hand side for Team Sky getting to him. It's the Welshman and Team Sky on the right hand side. But still, as we thought, the gold jersey of Lars Boom. Rabobank still pushing at the front. Just look at this, isn't it hurting? Contrasting styles, you've got riders out of the saddle. Look at the style on the front of Cummings, lovely rhythm. He's sitting there just uh, in that perfect climbing position and he's beginning to get clear. Well, we're over the first part of the climb and then we get a nice step up. Steve Cummings is pushing out a small advantage at the moment. He's regrouping at the back. But you just see no big gaps starting to appear as Steve Cummings forges ahead. Ninth overall at the moment, Cummings, 13 seconds off the lead. So this is a spirited effort then by Cummings, who finished a second in the Tour of Britain overall at five seconds. But we just got a glimpse of the man in black, and that's the rider from Rafa Konda Sharp. And of course, that is Jonathan Chin and Locke, and he's inspired by this climb. He's looking once again to try and pick up points. And a man that's clearly unhappy is Mark Gavendish. Oh, he's more than unhappy. He doesn't like these hard, steep climbs. But this man, if he'd done it in Gun Hill and he's doing it again in Confilly Mountain, he's ripping this field apart. The Rafa Condor rider is really putting it to these pros. He's bridged, hasn't he? Look at the support here at the spectator. This is just like the continent, Brian. We see this going on in Europe, don't we? Hello. You've got G supporters on the right hand side, the Santa Claus outfit and the Red of Wales, but it's a John Tien and Lock in black at the front for Rafa Condor Sharp with Steve Cummings with a slender advantage. Well, the field is fracturing here significantly. This really is the key moment, the defining moment then of stage four as they're getting closer to the summit of this climb of the Capilli Mountain. And Jonathan Tiernan Lock, he's full of strength and power. He makes it look so easy. Gavin is gritting his teeth and he's losing time. Well, Mark Adams is surely in the hot pocket at the moment, but it's uh, John Tiernan Lock. As we have the final slopes of this very steep climb, Steve Cummings trying to stay with him. Saw a net up rider, looks like Conic of uh, Netta coming up there in third place, but gaps starting to appear as we get to the top of this climb. Well, Tien and Locke has given the tree a severe shake, and the fallout is quite dramatic. He's at the top of the climb first, ten useful points he's picked up there, and it was Steve Cummings getting over second for nine, as the rest, well, they limp over the top. Well, just look here, we see the gold jersey still in contention at this moment. We take a sharp right, a very steep descent, and we're into the last final kilometres. And the rest of the field limp over the line, and the overall race leader, last boom of Rabobank, was eighth. Now then, he's got a little bit of catching up to do here. It is a tricky descent, it's technical, and approximately five kilometres to the line. Well, here in Wales, and we see a young Welsh devil at the moment in the right-hand side. This uh, crowd at the top of Capelli Mountain has really come out in numbers. Through the corridor of faces and the cheering, it really does lift the riders, but there's an interesting descending style. Yeah, we've got Honig for Netap at the front, John Tiernan Lock in second place, Steve Cummings still sitting there, but 
two riders trying to come across this small gap. Let me just tidy up the overall situation, the Skoda King of the Mountains. Thanks to that brilliant climbing by Jonathan Tiernan and Locke, he's got 32 now, and he's only seven shy of the overall leader, Russell Hampton. So Hampton is coming under pressure. And more and more riders coming across this gap at the moment. Looks as if we're going to have six riders in this leading group. At the front, John Tiernan and Locke, Hornig of NetApp, Steve Cummings coming across the gap. It's Linus Gerdeman, Thomas de Gent of Vacans Lair, and just tapped on the back is Iker Kamano of Enduro Racing. So six riders now trying to uh, turn the screw and put the rest to the sword. And on this kind of descent, a group of that size is probably a safer bet than being tucked in the wheels of the peloton. Yeah, you're right, Hugh. I wouldn't be uh, surprised if uh, Sky weren't trying to send more riders across here. They did chase it down and uh, they've only got one rider in this front group of six, but just look here, Hugh, more riders coming across. It looks as if we've got a group of about 20 odd riders in the front with the gold jersey of Lars Boone right in the middle. So they're all back again. This is gonna be a fascinating sprint finish. And this has surprised me completely. I thought they would be arriving in ones and twos, but once again, you can see the rider of Rabobank coming through, looking after his overall race leader, Lars Boone. Well, this is what they have to do. They're in the lead at the moment. Bram tanking a rubber bank leading his leader in the gold jersey Lars Boom and I tell you what with 10 6 and 4 on the finishing line it's going to be a hard fought contest I tell you who's going well on the left riding for motor point racing is Ian Bibby Bibby had a good ride yesterday and he's in the mix again here well it's Lars back in the right hand side for HTC tracked by Vac and Soleil tanking still in there Good to see Bibby in here, but Geraint Thomas is right on the gold jersey of Lars Boom. He needs to steal three seconds. Two kilometres to go then to decide this stage, stage four. It's been absorbing, it's been gripping. We've had a phenomenal day's racing action. Question is, who is going to lift his arms in the air to gain the victor spoils? Another attack on the left of the screen. Yeah, we're going to get attack after attack because everybody knows that we've got a sprint coming up with this group of about 20 odd riders. Who's going to beat Lars Boom? We're trying to pick out the riders further down this group. Yeah, we just waited to see who is the best sprinter here. Geron Thomas has got a very, very fair turn of speed. And if he can profit from the lead out of Boom in uh, the gold jersey, maybe Thomas could score a Welsh victory. Well, you can see just the left-hand side, the light blue and the black, and that's uh, Rory Sutherland of the UHC healthcare team. But again, we're getting attack after attack as we get in towards this finish. Well, I tell you what, Brian, there's a significant split here with one kilometre to go. There's about 22 riders in this group, so there's others that have lost a lot of time. Well, it's top sport Flander in at the front, net half in second place, UHC, but uh, I would think with Boom in here, he must stand a great chance of putting one over on the rest of them. Well, last Boom was the victor yesterday outside Hanley Town Hall in Stoke-on-Trent, and that was an uphill finish, so is he going to win two stages back-to-back? -back? I can see the white jersey up there as well of the world champion, Tur Hushoff. Hushoff has come through into second place. And he's got a teammate in front of him. It looks like the New Zealander Julian Dean is leading out. We're coming into this final corner. It's all about position at the moment. And it's all about courage as they come up to the sharp right-hander, the world champion, Tor Hushoff is round first. Thomas, well, he lost a bit of ground there. And last boom, the overall race leader, nipped through for second place. But here comes Tor Hushoff, the world champion in the rainbow jersey. He's got enough distance here to claim victory. There's the victory salute. Boom comes over the line second. And I'm afraid Thomas, well, he didn't get in the top three. So it means the second place then for Boom gives him another six second bonus. How useful is that going to be? He's the next group approaching the finish and they've lost six significant time. As you can see the leaders are really pushing hard towards the finish. They think it's all going to come down to seconds when it comes down to the final of this Tour of Britain. Here's the sprint again Brian, just talk us through the closing stages. Julian Dean led uh, Hushoff into the corner perfectly. Geraint Thomas surprised him to me, backed off, lost his speed and lost every opportunity to take a bonus second in the 10, 6 and 4. It was at the finish for the first three. And you cannot give a man like Tour Hushoff an advantage like that. So the world champion delivers here in Kafili at the end of stage four. It has been a sensational day's racing. Back to health, back to form, back to winning ways. Tor Hushoff carrying the rainbow stripes across the line into Kafili ahead of all the rest. And when the rest did come in, they crossed in bits and pieces. Lars Boom finishing in second. Ian Bibby in a very strong fourth place with Geraint Thomas in 11th at the same time. But then Mark Cavendish in the third group on the road at 31 seconds.